Hi everyone, welcome to Algebra 2 STEM. I am Mr. Schwalier. Today we are going to fill in today's notes in our student journal uh, for the first lesson of the year, uh, which is section 1.1. Uh, this lesson has two parts. The first part is parent functions, uh, which you can see right here, and we'll take notes on that in this video. The second part of the lesson is transformations, uh, which we will cover shortly in our next video. I will ask you occasionally to pause the video to try some of the tasks on your own, and other times we'll go through things step by step together. Uh, to take notes today, there are a few things you'll need. Uh, the first thing is you will need your student journal. Hopefully you have that out now. Uh, we're on page two of it for this lesson, and obviously you'll need a pencil. And in addition to the video that you're watching now, if you could take a moment to open up a new tab and log in to the Big Ideas website, uh, you'll be using that to fill in some vocab in a little while. So if you do not have the Big Ideas tab open right now, why don't you just stop and do that for a moment, pause the video, and then pick back up with us. All right, so let's get going. Uh, we're taking notes. You're in your student journal on page two, and we're going to try to do pages two, three, and four together. So it first says uh, graph the graphs of eight basic parent functions are shown below. Classify each function as, and then it gives you a list of options. These are things that you did do in Algebra 1, so this is going to be a bit of a review for you, but it has been a while. Uh, what I'd like you to do is pause the video now and see if you can on your own answer A through F, and then you'll notice on it carries over to page 3, G, G and H. So give that a, a try, and then when you're set, unpause the video, and we'll go over it together. Okay, we're back. Uh, let's take a look at the first one. Uh, this is an absolute value function. Anytime it looks like a V that's either going up or an upside down V, uh, you can know that you are looking at an absolute value function. Uh, the second one, hopefully you chose that it is a square root function. You'll notice that it starts going up kind of fast and then it kind of slows down and tails off. Whenever you see something like that, uh, you can be reasonably sure you're probably looking at a square root function. Notice that this one does not go forever in each direction. Uh, for part C, you just see a flat line, a horizontal flat line. Uh, when you see that, you know you're looking at a constant function. Uh, going on to part D, uh, you notice that it starts out very, very slowly. It kind of does the opposite of the square root. This time it starts out very slowly, and then it starts going up very fast. Or maybe you'd see it go down very fast. When you see that, you are looking at an exponential function. I'd like to point out, if you can look at part B and part D, the exponential function, it keeps going this way forever, and it also keeps going this way forever. Where with the square root, it keeps going this way forever, but it stops right here. So that's a way that you can uh, identify the difference between a square root and an exponential function. Moving on to part E, hopefully you chose cubic. Cubic, kind of, it's like three-dimensional, so when I think cube, so it kind of goes in three dire directions, so it kind of goes up, and then it kind of goes over, and then it goes up again, or it could go down, over, and down uh, as well. But when you see something like that, you're looking at a cubic function. Uh, the next one is a classic linear function. Uh, I do want to point out that if you go over to C, this constant function is kind of linear as well. However, if it's just completely horizontal, we say that it's constant. If it's a straight line that has some sort of slope, which means it either goes up a little bit or down a little bit, then we use the word uh, linear to define it. So there we go. Uh, let's move on to page three and look at part G. Uh, for this, this is called a reciprocal reciprocal function. And 
when you look at a reciprocal function, you're going to see that it gets broken apart. So right here, the function gets broken apart. It actually gets broken apart right here, too, and it kind of splits into multiple pieces. When you see something like that, uh, you are very often looking at a reciprocal function. Another word that people use to describe this graph is rational. So I'm going to have you write that, too, please, because... Actually, over the course of the year, you'll probably be using the word rational often more than you use reciprocal. We'll talk about the differences. There's, there's slight differences between them, uh, and we'll discuss that later in the course. And then finally, for uh, part H, hopefully you said that this is a quadratic. function, a quadratic function. So it goes um, down and up, or they can also go up and then back down. So we have just identified the basic parent functions uh, by their names. But now that we're working together, I would like to kind of take a deep dive into these, and we're going to take a few extra notes so that we have it set for uh, later on, because you can refer back to this. So the next thing we're going to do with all these is we're going to look at the domain and the range of each. So I'm sure those are words that you've heard of, and maybe you remember what domain and range mean. Uh, but if you do not, this will be a good refresher for us. So let's look at the absolute value function here. Let's start with the domain. So we'll go D. Okay, so the domain is the domain is, domain is always the answer to the question. If you're looking at the function, where can you find it when you look to the left and to the right? So I notice that this graph goes to the left or to the right forever. It also goes to the left forever. So because it goes to the right and to the left forever, uh, we say that it is all real numbers. And I just kind of make a we kind of make a fancy R that looks like that to um, denote all real numbers. The range is always the answer to the question, where can you find the graph when you look up and down? I notice that I cannot find the graph down here. It, it stops right here. The only time we can see the graph is uh, when it's above the x-axis. So if we're looking up and down, we're looking at y values. So the only y values that we can find the graph are the y values that are greater than or equal to zero. So the domain is all reals. The range are all of the y's that are greater than or equal to zero. Let's move on to part b, the square root function. Where can I find the graph? It goes to the right forever, but it does not go to the left forever. So if I'm looking right or left, I'm looking at x values. It's all the x's that are greater than or equal to zero. The range is the answer to where can I find it when I look up and down. Those are y values. It doesn't, again, it doesn't go down forever, but it will go up forever. And I, so I'll see it at all the y's that are greater than or equal to zero. We're doing good. On to the constant, the domain. Does it go to the right forever? Yep. Does it go to the left forever? Yep. The domain is all real numbers. Oops, got to make the fancy R. And for the range, uh, it doesn't go up forever and it doesn't go down forever. The only time you can find it is when the Y is at 1, it looks like. So Y equals 1. That is the only place you can find it when you look up and down. For the exponential function, we've got a domain. Uh, does it go to the left forever? Yep. Does it go to the right forever? Yep. So all real numbers for the domain. For the range, uh, it goes up forever, but it does not go down forever. So it's all the y's that are greater than or equal to zero. All right, cubic, look at us go. Domain, mm, yep, it goes to the right. It keeps going to the left, all real numbers. For the range, it does go up forever, and it does go down forever. So this is our first range that is also all real numbers. For the linear domain, it goes to the right forever, it goes to the left forever, so all real numbers. The range, it goes up forever, it goes down forever, so all real numbers. Oops, the range is, there's my fancy R. And on to the next page, so flip over to page three. Okay, reciprocal function Okay, so it does go to the right forever and left forever, but there's no value at zero. So I'm going to say that the domain is all real numbers except 
zero. And for the range, same thing, right? It goes up forever, it goes down forever, but there's no value at zero. So it's all the real numbers. Oops, that's a bad one. Ew. There we go. Except zero. Okay, onto our final graph, the quadratic. It goes to the right forever, it goes to the left forever. So the domain will be all real numbers. And for the range, it does go up forever, but it does not go down past, past zero. So the range is all of the y's that are greater than or equal to zero. Uh, let's see. What are the characteristics of some of the basic parent functions? I suppose there's a lot of things you could answer for that, but I would argue that we've just uh, answered a lot of those questions by answering the domain and range of each one. So we're going to say that these are our answers for number two. Same with all these. We've just gone over a lot of the basic characteristics of them. And then for number three, it says write an equation for each function for each of these graphs, uh, then verify using a graphing calculator. Instead of writing that right here, why don't we write the equation for each of these graphs right by the actual graph? That'll be easier for you when you want to look back and refer to it later. So let's go back to uh, page two. Let's take a look at this one. The basic absolute value function equation is y equals, uh, the absolute value symbol is two straight up and down bars like that. And then we'll go like that. Actually, instead of saying y equals, sorry, I'm gonna make you erase. Let's say f of x, we'll use function notation. There we go. All right, on to the square root. So this is going to be f of x equals the square root of x. Uh, for part c, the constant, uh, f of x, the function will always be at 1, won't it? All right, exponential is going to be f of x equals 2 raised to the x power. The cubic is f of x is equal to x cubed. And for the linear, f of x equals x. Let's go on to page 3 to wrap it up. And we have the rational. So this is, excuse me, we're calling it reciprocal. We'll also call it rational often as well. f of x equals 1 over x. And finally, for the quadratic, f of x equals x squared. And these are all things you did study in Algebra 1. However, that was a couple years ago, so uh, it's good that we have this little bit of a refresher. We're going to do one more page before uh, we break for this video and then move on to the uh, second part of today's lesson. And that is I'm going to have you uh, go to page four, and I want you to write down all of these, the definitions to these vocab words. Uh, whenever you have to write down vocab words and you want to find... Uh, find them. You're going to do that in big ideas. That's why we opened up that second tab. So will you please right now uh, go over to your second tab in on your Chromebook and your first step would be to be in big ideas which hopefully you've already done. Once you're in big ideas you'll click on dynamic classroom. After that your next step will be to uh, get yourself to section 1.1 uh, then you would select objectives and vocabulary. And then finally, uh, you would click on each of these vocabulary words that would pop up on your screen. And as you click on each word, it will then um, give you the definition of the word. And that's what you would write here, 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 and here. Uh, these, uh, this part of the notes we've already gone over uh, extensively right here and here. So to finish this video, I simply need you to uh, head on to Big Ideas, wrap this up, and uh, then we'll be able to um, take a look at the transformations uh, in a moment in our next video. Thanks for watching.